protect us from the worldly influences. That's it. And then, and renews our mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the world with the many distractions, it's crucial to establish time and space for solitude. In other words, time for God. You got time for everything else. You got time for everyone else, but you don't have time for God. You make excuses why you can't do it for God. And then if you do, you do in dead work. Dead anointing. But he said you got to be recharged. You got to be rejuvenated. See, just like that cell phone. We you everybody probably got a cell phone by now. Yeah. Or if you don't, you got a house phone. But when you use that cell phone in a period of time, it began to lose charge. Yeah. So in other words, you got to take your battery charger and recharge it. Or now they got devices you can just lay it on it and it recharge to get that cell phone back to the full use. Yeah. Well, if you got to recharge that cell phone to get that perfect use, what about your spiritual life? See, in your spiritual life, your trials and tribulations are cause you to be discharged. But then when you begin to seek God and you begin to pray, you become charged up. Nobody has to tell you what time of service is. You are charged. Your time 
that need to be healed. Well, then you need to talk to God. Because if your life is in perfect condition, now, glory to God, hallelujah, God will have no problem giving you assignments. Because you will do what he said to you. But anyway, 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 the Jews glory. under the prophet leadership resulted to faith in God while they rebuilt the wall. They saw the need. Nineveh inspected the condition of the wall. And the prophet saw the terrible condition it was in. See, I want to ask you a question. What condition is your life in? Only you can answer that. As you look at your spiritual life, what do you see? Is there a wall that's broken down and lying in the cave? See, you would never reveal an area in your life until you can clearly see that there is a problem. Yes. See, occasionally we need to begin to inspect our life. Yes. But what we do, we inspect other people's life. Yes. But it comes a time when you got to inspect your life. Yes. And you got to see what condition your life is in. Yes. See, your spiritual condition is not what we try to portray or portray in the eyes of the others. Wow. See, when I'm around you, now I portray that I'm on my way to glory. Wow. But God sees the inner man. Yes. Ah. Yes. See, he sees what's going on on the inside. Oh, now, yes. See, we can act real saved in the sanctuary. Yes. Now, yes. But what about when you leave the presence of the saints? Can you still represent Jesus? Oh, ah. Lord, Lord. Jesus. See, it, it is what God knows to be true deep down inside of us. Remembering, I want you to remember the piercing words that God spoke to Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not at the continent, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. That was Saul, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Saul was king. Yes, sir. Saul thought he could do like he wanted to do. Yeah. God told him to destroy everything in that city. Yeah. Every animal, everybody in that city. But what Saul did was, he decided he will keep the best. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he even spared the king. Yeah. And he brought the king into the camp. Amen. And the prophet said, I hear something. Mm -hmm. I hear the <laughs> The sheep was in the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus. See, God said, I hear something. Jesus. I don't hear your praise. Jesus. I don't hear your worship. Jesus. I don't hear nothing. You're contented with being at 
in the Lord. Be strengthened in the Lord. That's it. And in the power of his might. That's it. See, I can't stand unless the Lord lifts me up. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. See, some situation that you go through, it's hard. Yes. It's a task. Yes, sir. So that's when we got to ask the Lord, Lord, hold me up. Oh, yes, Lord. Help me, God. Yes, Lord. I don't feel like I can make it. Help me, God. Yes, see, see, I thought about the ten lepers, but see, they was healed as they went. Yes, Some of us stand still and say, Heal. Here I am. But as you go, as you praise him, as you worship him, as you do his will, victory comes. See, when they thank you, should you are down like this and you can hardly go. And they say, she's been the father. He ain't going to make it. And after a while, you're down. But you're strong. And it helps you get to your journey. And to your destination. Huh? And when you get there, when they say, she going to fall, he going to fall. And all of a sudden, you're standing on he can tell him something that's talking that they walk with me, Lord. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yesterday, that's all I saw. While I'm on this tedious journey, walk with me. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to the world, conform, but be transformed. By the renewal of your mind. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable. See, we got to know what's God's will Amen. and what's our will. That's it. See, sometimes we do things on our own and we say it's God's will. Amen. And then we get ourselves in a mess. And then we begin to say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yes, you do. You're going to trust God. Yeah. You're going to consult God in all your ways because you got there by not consulting him. Yeah. So now you got to ask God, help me out of this mess. Help me out of this mess. The next one is reclaiming. Reclaiming is retrieve or recover something that's previous lost, given, or paid, or tamed for the return. Amen. So you got to begin to speak like the devil speak to you. You got to speak to the devil. You got to tell him, I want my joy back. I want my peace back. I want my family back. I want my health back. Talk to him like he talked to you. But the only thing is, you got authority. And you got power. The Bible said to speak those things as they are. Huh? I'm going to speak what I see. I see my joy coming back. So I got to speak it. To be spiritually prepared is a sense of spiritual contentment. This may be achieved when your relationship with God becomes what? Solid. Amen. See, your relationship with God shouldn't be wishy-washy. Huh? Shouldn't be wishy-washy. Shouldn't be you high today. You low tomorrow. It can't be wishy-washy. But you got to stand in the middle on the days when things is not good and say, all is well. All is well. Yes, huh? But what I found out what we do, we get too comfortable when things are going our way. Yeah. When everything is going our way, we stop praying. Come on. We stop fasting. Oh. And we sure enough stop coming to church. Oh. And then all of a sudden, the enemy has a tight over us. And 
And then we are in a mode where it's our low area. Don't have enough word in us to bring us back up. The next one is rekindling. Rekindling your spiritual flame requires that you shed your old self and resume your new identity. The Bible said once we become a Christian, we become a what? A new creature. That old man no longer exists. We supposed to have buried the old man. But all of a sudden when we lose that fire. See, you must prioritize being Christ-centered. Prioritize being Christ-centered instead of self-centered. That's it, Lord. Self-centered. You praise him when you want so. And when things are wrong or things are not. See, see, that's just like loving somebody. If you love me, when I do everything for you. And then when I can't do for you, sister, minister, wives and husbands. When he can't take you out to dinner. Jesus. Can't buy you a dozen of roses. Jesus. You get the idea funny. Oh, Don't want to cook and been cooking all along. My Jesus. My Jesus. When he, when she don't cook, she said, I'm just tired. You get I get funny. Won't even cook. You can cook. Mama. Won't even go buy a dinner. Mama. Is that real love? Mama. Jesus. Or is that convenience? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only when then will the Holy Spirit be able to fill your heart and set it on fire for us to perform what God has called us to do. You got to set your heart and attention on the purpose that God has given to you. Amen. Where is the fire? Amen. See, when we begin to be on fire for God, it'll burn up everything that's not like God. Amen. It'll burn it up. First Corinthians 14, 4 said it reads, everything should be done in a fitting and an orderly way. This basically say we should always be spiritual prepared as it is the key to our spiritual health. Some of us is unhealthy spiritually. Amen. Unhealthy. Jesus. Spiritually. Yes. Just like we could be unhealthy physically. Yes. We don't eat the right food. We don't take our medication. Don't drink no water. Drinks of sodas instead of water. Don't drink no juice. Don't walk. Jesus. After a while, our bodies become unhealthy. Amen. Well, I'm coming to tell you that your spiritual house can become unhealthy. Yes. Yes. Unhealthy. Yes. Somebody say unhealthy. unhealthy. That's why you can't say amen. Unhealthy. unhealthy. That's why you're being your cell phone texting when you shouldn't be listening to the word. Unhealthy. 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 I'm almost finished. As important as your breath. If you're not breathing, you're dead. Amen. Some people is dead and you're still coming to church. Ooh, Jesus. And life is all around you. Jesus. But you choose to die. Amen. Mm -hmm. Got two more and I'm finished. Refreshing. Being given a new strength or energy. How about you need a refresh? That's it. Refresh. Yes. 
You just need a refresh. You refuse to die. And as the Lord led, think last year into this year, that this is a season of newness. It's a new season. If you take it, it's a new season in your life. If you abide by it, it comes a new season in your life. A new season. A new season. A brand new day. My last one is rebalancing. We think that rebalancing is, I got everything in the road. I'm holding things together. Rebalancing is spiritual temperance. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have it under control. Yeah. <laughs> when we have spiritual temperance, we allow God to balance our lives. We allow God to balance our lives, balance our attitude, balance our service. See, see, it's, it's, it's a lot, the Bible says that many has been called to serve. Call. But then he dealt with me on that part about on the fewest choice. See, those chosen ones is going to stand no matter what. See, the few, the many that's called is the one that God got to always bless before they can go. Your path got to always be sunny and no rain in order for you to go. But the chosen has counted up the cost. And they realize I've got a sign and a call from God. All the time the weather is not going to be sunny. There's going to be storms. But I still got to go. See, in ministry, sometime in your ministry is when you're going through the greatest. But because of the call, he strengthened you. Yes, Jesus. Where is the chosen? See, in this season here, God is dealing with the chosen. Luke 21, 36 say, but stay awake at all times, praying that she may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. See, somebody is asleep. Mm -hmm. wow. You can't get prepared because you are asleep. You don't hear Jesus because you sleep. First Peter 1 Peter 1.13 said, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. First seek ye 